Hi, I'm Heather Schulte. I'm an artist here in Boulder, Colorado, and I'm the creator and facilitator of the Stitching the Situation project. I'm filming today on location in the Building 61 Makerspace, which is part of the Boulder Public Library. If you've never been in this space, you are missing out. I would argue it has the most potential for creative output per square foot of any space in Boulder. Whether you're interested in sewing, laser cutting, 3D printing, woodworking, electronics, screen printing, and so much more, there's something for everyone here. They didn't pay me to say that. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to cross stitch. You might be thinking, my grandma does cross stitch, ugh. Well, stick with me for a few minutes and you may realize just how cool your grandma is. Fun fact, did you know that needles were invented before the wheel? And we're talking like 50,000 years before. The oldest needle is about 61,000 years old and was found in modern day South Africa. Decorative stitching has been around for at least 30,000 years. The earliest evidence of cross stitching was found in Egypt, China, and India, long before European ladies were sitting in their drawing rooms stitching until they found their perfect suitor. While we may associate stitching with femininity, both men and women have stitched across the globe for thousands of years. And historically, fine textiles were worth as much or more than the most revered art of the day. How times change. Regardless of the purpose stitching served or the person doing the stitching, one thing has remained true across the ages. Creating items with thread and fabric is one way that we all express ourselves, whether reinforcing cultural norms or rebelling against them. So cross stitch is a particular form of embroidery where you make little X's with thread on the surface of fabric. It's organized with a grid system, so it's quite simple to learn. And as with anything, you can make it infinitely complex by varying the thread, color, and size of your stitches. If you've picked up a kit from the Boulder Public Library, it looks a little something like this. You'll have all the materials you need, minus a pair of scissors, and if you want to use a thimble or an embroidery hoop or frame, that's on you. So first, let's go through our tools and materials. In your kit, you'll have most of what you need, and I'm gonna go over all the bits and pieces that you can use in addition to that if you feel like you need to. First, we have our fabric. We have thread, we have our needles, scissors, needle threaders, thimbles, and embroidery hoops or embroidery frames. You can cross stitch on any type of fabric and many non-fabric materials. For this project, we're gonna be using what's called Aida cloth. And Aida cloth is woven specially to be used for cross stitch. You can see if you look really closely, the holes are woven into the fabric itself. So you don't have to pierce through it with your needle. The grid is already in the fabric and you just make little X's through all these little holes. Thread comes in all sorts of materials. You typically have cotton, but there's also nylon and rayon. And if you want to get fancy, you can use silk. There's also wool embroidery thread. For this project, we're gonna be using the most common, which is a six strand uh, cotton embroidery floss. And these come in these little hanks, just like this. Um, DMC is the most common brand. They have over 500 colors. Uh, they do have other types of floss, which this one I believe is nylon. Um, on the label, it says what the material is, which I don't know if you can see it on there, but this one it says 100% cotton, and then it also has the number of the thread. So each color has a number. There's also these two-stranded, which these are thicker, we're not gonna use that. Now when you get your floss on this little hank, it's really easy to get it tangled up. I'll show you how to pull it out without tangling it later. But most people tend to like to wind them on these little bobbins, which you can buy, and then you can write the color number on it or this one actually has the color number printed on it already. You can use just a piece of cardboard. It's a great way to recycle an old cardboard box or cereal box. I cut mine in strands and then I braid them together. And that way I can just pull off a strand when I'm ready to use it. Now when we come to our needles, 
For embroidery, thread, or for embroidery on um, cross stitch, you typically want to use a blunt needle because, like I showed you before, this fabric has a weave and the little holes are already in the weave. So you don't need a sharp needle to pierce the fabric. You can use what's called a blunt tip needle. And as you can see here, they come in different sizes. The bigger needles are gonna be for bigger thread on a bigger canvas, which means you have fewer stitches per inch, but the stitches are bigger. And the smaller ones are gonna be used for fewer threads or thinner thread on a finer weave canvas, which means you're gonna have more stitches per inch and they're gonna be really small. This is for really fine detail work. You can also use sharps if you want to. The problem with sharps is you tend to end up piercing the actual thread on your fabric or piercing the fabric itself and not making it through the hole. All of those things are included in your kit. What you're gonna need to have in addition to that is a pair of scissors. Any pair of scissors will work. I have a selection here. <laughs> Some of them are really sharp. I wouldn't bring these on a plane. I have before, but I've also had them taken away from me. So don't bring them on a plane. I have these tiny little ones that I take with me now when I'm bringing stitching with me. These pass TSA inspection. There's also these little snippers. And you can use a regular pair of scissors. I just like the small ones because they're easy to transport. And I pretty much bring my stitching with me everywhere I go. Next, what you could use that's optional is a needle threader. Now this is included in your kit, but you don't absolutely have to use it. These are the type that I have in your kit. They have a little plastic bit and a wire sticking off the end. These are the ones that you typically find in like a regular sewing mending kit. And then this is another type that has a little hook. There's a big hook for bigger eye needles and a small hook for smaller eye needles. I don't know if you can really see that. but. <laughs> and a personal preference thing, some people like to use needles, some people hate them. These are metal ones. They come in different sizes, like this one's too big for my pinky finger, but it fits on my middle finger. This one's smaller, doesn't really fit on my middle finger. So, if you're going to use a metal one, you want to try them on. There's these ones that are like plastic that are hard on the tip, and then they're rubbery on the back side, so they're a little more comfortable to fit on your finger. I just make my own with a scrap piece of leather, and it fits my finger. They're not very pretty, but it does the job. The last thing a lot of people like to use are embroidery hoops or frames. Now there's multiple different types of embroidery hoops and embroidery frames. These are ones that are most common. Um, they come in obviously lots of different sizes. You can find them in metal and plastic as well. The wooden ones are nice because when you're done, if you want to use them as a frame, you can just hang them on a nail from the little screw at the top and you can paint this frame any color you want. I really like these plastic ones, which are called snap frames. I think one of the brands that makes them is called Q-Snap. They're basically like a PVC piping kind of thing and they just snap together. And then they have these little plastic pieces um, that snap your fabric onto them. If you want to use an embroidery hoop, it's pretty simple. It's just two pieces of wood, one's bigger than the other, and it has this little screw that you unscrew on the top. And you take them apart, you put the smaller one down. This isn't uh, uh, eight o'clock, but it'll, it'll work for demonstrating. And you put it down there and then you put this over the top. And then you tighten it up with the screw and then you can pull your fabric if you need to to make it more tight and that just makes it to where when you're making your stitches um, you're not pulling the fabric and making it pucker because the tension of your stitches especially if you have a really floppy fabric like this will tend to distort the fabric if you wanted to use one of these snap frames just pop these guys off And it's the same principle. You put this over the frame and then snap each one of these little guys on. These are really nice because they, um, they don't pull your fabric and distort it as much 
as these guys do, you have less of a hard edge, whereas this little edge in here, you tend to have a little circle on your fabric. And you change the tension just by rolling these guys out. And you have like a little drum. And it's nice and tight. And they're really easy to shift around. The other type of embroidery frame there are is called a scroll frame. And there's got a rod here and a rod here. And it has a slit in it that you slide your fabric in. And then you just click it up and down to make it tight. I like these ones the best because you have the least distortion and the least amount of tension, uh, distortion tension on your fabric. And they come with, you can also get uh, tabletop frames to put them on so you don't have to hold it while you're stitching. It's pretty nifty. All right, let's get to stitching.